Hi again, it's me Boo. And this time I'm back with a, a, a fragrance that I'm really surprised I bought a bottle of. And here's why. Um, I have never been on the kerosene bandwagon at all. I've always been a little disappointed. I mean, some of them I got a decant of Fields of Rubus because I thought it performed really well uh, compared to the rest of the fragrances, which is all of the fragrances of kerosene. I've tried them all. And uh, um, with the exception of Rude Elements, I think it actually performed pretty well, but I wasn't into Oud when I tested it, so I want to go back to try it again down the road. But um, anyway, um, I was disappointed, him being an ex-perfume reviewer and um, charging as much as he does for a bottle. Um, my whole thinking was that you're paying more for the bottle than the juice. I mean, the bottles are amazing. Um, I don't know if he was an auto and body guy or what, but from what I understand, he does these bottles, or he probably has help now, but um, he started off doing these, painting these bottles um, each individually himself and, um, you know, they're done like a car is done. I think it's the same kind of paint and finishing and yada yada, whatever. So the bottles are super cool. But the juice and the fragrances have been nice. You know, I, I really enjoyed Copper Skies um, uh, and Santalum Slivers. I enjoyed both of those, but they just didn't perform for me at all. Um, nearly worthy enough you know, to buy a full bottle. So I've never been on the bandwagon. Um, sure, he's a nice guy and all that, but that means he deserves my friendship, not my money. So I have, you know, resisted until I found a fragrance I thought was full bottle worthy. Well, I have. <laughs> and here's what's ironic. The definition of irony is that I've talked to a couple people and of all of his fragrances, they think this one performs the worst. And for me, it performs totally the best. And this is Unknown Pleasures, his newest one. Oh my God. Oh, it's yummy. Oh, but it's a, it's a gourmand, but it's a different kind of gourmand. Um, well, let me tell you the notes. I, for, well, for me, it's, it's before I even get into the notes. I think of it as like sipping on, well, at first it's, it's really a blast of lemon. And then almost immediately, uh, this vanilla cake kind of note comes in. And <clears throat> then when it kind of settles down, it's not real. It, it, it doesn't have great depth. You know, it doesn't change a lot from start to finish, but that's totally okay with me. The only thing it does, lemon kind of goes in the background and all the sweets come in the foreground. So, and a little bit of tea. So it's like drinking a cup of tea, um, you know, one of those black teas, you know, a, an oolong or an earl grey. Well, oolong's too strong, but, you know, something subtle like an earl grey or whatever. Um, I don't know my teas. But, <clears throat> um, and then eating a lemon vanilla cake. That's what it reminds me of. And for me, it really performs well. And everybody else that is a huge fan of his is saying, oh, this one kind of, you know, I'm disappointed. Smells good but it doesn't perform for me. And oh my gosh, I have been wearing the heck out of this since I got it. Um, I'm wearing it right now and I think I'll put some more on. Um, granted, I do have to, you know, I, and I have to do probably to really get it to last for me all day. I do about four or five sprays, you know, which is quite a few. Um, but that's all right with me because that does pretty much last me all day. And that's skin and clothes. It does last a little better on the clothes, um, this one does, than the skin. But <clears throat> it is divine. And it's such a nice take on gourmands. It's not just your usual in-your-face kind of cloying vanilla. And it's not that smoky kind of a vanilla um, uh, smell. And it's not that, you know, pledge furniture polish kind of a, a, a lemon smell either. <clears throat> it's it's more of a it's more of a, a true lemon smell like you've just cut some lemons so anyway crazy about it digging on it big time 
<laughs> I really love. See, now I get him. Okay, now I get him. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna jump on the bandwagon because one out of eight or whatever I don't think is great odds, but well, two because I do have a decant of Fields of Rubus. So you know, there's two out of several that I like. So you know, it's not my favorite house, but is this one full bottle worthy for the gourmand lovers? Lovers, I think it is. Um, you know, um, I you know I I, I kind of relate it to people who read a really good book like say the Lord of the Rings trilogy and they go see the movies and they're totally disappointed they had these really high hopes they were thinking it was going to be this major thing that was going to follow the book and they were just going to be so happy and and that their their mental visualizations are now up on the screen and you know they're in cinema heaven la 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 <clears throat> and they're disappointed because the movie doesn't follow the book. It's not what they visualize, blah, blah, blah. So, but then somebody who hasn't read the book, isn't on that bandwagon, goes to see the movie and loves them, thinks they're incredible. And that's kind of the way I am. I haven't read this book, but I went and saw the movie and I'm digging it. I love it. And so everybody who's read the book, though, is all disappointed in this one. I find that really funny. So I love it. I totally love it. And um, and it performs actually really well. It lasts long. And in the projection and the siage, like I said, if I do four or five spritzes, it, it actually will come out, you know, a good foot, foot and a half. And I'm, I'm happy with that. I mean, I just wore it to work out. I just got back from working out and I've been wearing this. I wore this today. And it's totally appropriate up at the gym, I think. Because it isn't an offensive or a cloying kind of sweet gourmand. Oh, I was going to tell you the notes and stuff. So, let me do that. So, um, it was launched this, or I think it was actually this month it was launched. I don't think it was launched last month. I'm pretty sure it was launched this month, uh, 2013, January. Um, it's official notes, Earl Grey tea, lemon, honey, bergamot, tonka, caramel, uh, vanilla, and waffle cone. Oh yeah, that waffle cone. Definitely you get that. Um, and nobody yet says it smells like anything. And honestly, I can't think of anything of mine that it smells like. I mean, you might be able to combine a few fragrances and get something similar, but no. This one flies on its own and it's wonderful. Um, like I said, it's, but there's still that tea note that also is in there that helps keep it kind of grounded from coming out and being that floaty, gourmandy, too much for primetime TV kind of a sweet. Um, and this one doesn't do that. This is just the right amount of sweet. It's just the right amount of tart with the lemon. And it's just the right amount of, of warmth and depth to it that that and and just the right amount of fluctuation from top notes to dry down to make me say okay <laughs> it's time and so here's my first kerosene so and that kind of brings me to a, a, a something i wanted to kind of pick some people's brains about because um, oh, and I have to tell you, if you see this weird reflection off my eyes, I have like bionic eyes. Um, I had some eye surgeries and they had to put some artificial parts in my eyes and stuff for me to see because I was like blind or whatever. So anyway, um, so if you see these weird reflections off of the, <laughs> the light, because I now have a little portable light that I put in front of me so I don't, you know, look like the Crypt Keeper quite so much. So... Um, but it does this weird eye reflection. So just so you know, that's what it is. Um, <clears throat> anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. So uh, there's been kind of a debate going on between reviewers. And, you know, I'm just curious as to where people stand with it. I know where I stand and where I used to stand. And, and um, I'm going to make this kind of quick. But I just want to put this thought out there. And I'd love to get some comments or some private messages or whatever, you know, let me know what you guys think. But <clears throat> should you um, buy a perfume from a perfumer because they're a nice guy? I mean, should you support that house in, in its entirety, even if the fragrances are, you know, okay, but nothing spectacular? Um, and um, 
and maybe your love of the person has taint has changed your your nose a little bit in your brain to where you know when you really respect and adore a perfumer or a house or whatever then you so much want to love that fragrance that you know your nose kind of tweaks a little bit and maybe if it's a real stink bomb you won't hate it as much or you might even like it or whatever when you normally wouldn't as opposed to when a perfumer is a douche hat and they're they just act like jerks and um I'm not going to say any names, but, you know, there's several houses out there that are talk on the community of how, you know, she's just a, a, a horrible beast. And, um, but, you know, you don't like them as a person, but their fragrances are incredible. So does that matter when you're fragrance shopping? See, it used to for me. It used to, and, and I'm thinking of one or two houses in particular that I was really turned off of, and I'd smelled a few, and I didn't really care for them <clears throat> because I knew how much of a, a, a dweeb, you know, the perfumer or the owner of the house or whatever was. So <clears throat> then I kind of got over that. I'm like, you know, I don't like denying myself anything fragrantically. I want to sniff everything out there I, I possibly can get my hands on and my nose under and over and around and you know what do I care you know it doesn't ma matter in any other aspect of my life so why should it in perfumes I mean everybody knows that uh, a certain uh, freaky actor that likes to hop on Oprah's couch and act like a real you know dick bomb um, <clears throat> still everybody pays to go see his movies he, he does great movies. He's no great actor. Um, he's certainly not a good person. But everybody go, still goes to pay for his movies and see his movies. And same with rockers. You know, they'll trash hotel rooms. They'll spit on fans and everything. And everybody's just like, ah, oh, you know, love them. So why should it matter with a perfumer <clears throat> is my question. It used to for me. And then when I got over that, it was just like, my nose opened so many doors and windows in my life and I realized that those fragrances from that house that at first I hated has now become my favorite house. My absolute favorite house. And almost every fragrance out of that house I absolutely adore or I respect and appreciate. So what do you think? Do you think that uh, you should be, you know, um, um, denying yourself because that's what it is. You're not denying the perfume or anything, really. Um, not everybody is going to know that they're a dick, and so they're going to buy their fragrances, or they're not going to care. So, you know, do you really take a stand that way? Or do you just say, WTF, and go ahead and buy the fragrances and enjoy them, and realize that there's a lot of douche bombs out there, and there's not much you can do about it. But... You can still, you know, surround yourself with the aromas that you want to have and that you enjoy and not deny them to yourself. So I'm just curious what you guys think. Asshole with so-so or with great frags. Um, is that cool? Do you support them? Or do you support the nice guy who's got mm, okay frags or okay performing frags? Um, or do you support both and just not care? because you are like me and just don't want to um, put myself in any kind of box. Um, I like to spread my wings. Thank you. So anyway, that's all I got for now. I'll be back soon, and I hope you have a great day. All right, peace.